This week, Apple had its Worldwide Developers Conference, which is exactly as nerdy as it sounds. They invite all of the developers of apps into the centre of Apple's nerddom, and then they tell them about all the changes they're going to make to Apple software. So not, it's not about new iPhones and new MacBooks, it's about software. So uh, Mac OS, which is the operating system they have for their laptops, and then they have iOS, which is the operating system for the mobile phone devices. Anyway, they've announced a bunch of changes. The most important of those changes is that they're killing iTunes. And to explain what that means for you and that huge collection of emo music that you have from 2001, we have Daniel Van Boom from the technology website CNET and technology reporter with the ABC Science Unit, Ariel Bogle. They killed iTunes. Absolutely, yeah. I think that iTunes is a really interesting um, moment in technology history, music history as well. So just to take people back in the late 1990s, early 2000s, that's when file sharing really took off. So the music industry's number one enemy was platforms like Napster, which let people just share files with each other, get away with ripping one CD once, and then no one else has to pay for it because the music is so easily shared. And I think that iTunes came out in 2001 and really put a sort of corporate face on that practice. People could start to organise their digital files. There's a great... um, clips of Steve Jobs online from the 2001 conference where he's like, it's this thing, digital music, MP3. (laughs) Um, All right. So for for you, what do you think is the biggest sort of cultural impact that that iTunes have have had in its time? Definitely the legal file file sharing. So fun fact, um, iTunes was kind of created because of like a Jobsian design idiosyncrasy. In the the iMac, Jobs demanded that they had a disk uh, slot instead of a disk tray which meant that people couldn't burn CDs on them. And so their solution to that after like two years when they were like, oh, no, we made a mistake, was to make software to make file sharing like legal. Uh, And then two years later, they essentially created the digital music market. When they launched iTunes Store in 2003, uh, they predicted they would sell a million songs in six months and they sold a million songs in six days. Exactly what have they announced they're doing? They're, They're not completely setting fire to it, are they? No, so people, the sort of small number of people that are still maintaining the ownership of music files, they'll be able to keep those files. But Apple is splitting the functionality of iTunes into three apps. So a music app, a TV app and a podcast app. So at the moment, all that can be done on iTunes, but it's making um, it a pretty complex piece of software, pretty slow. But I think it is interesting to think of iTunes as having a hand in so many of those developments over the past decades. So it introduced people to a way of file sharing, of completely being able to customise your listening experience. You weren't tied to the album format. You could just take the songs you wanted, arrange them in the way you wanted and then burn a CD and listen to it however Mm. you wanted. I mean, and then, of course, comes the idea of purchasing music, creating a marketplace. Then comes the way that music was no longer tied to a place. When iTunes was combined with the iPod, you could take music wherever you wanted. And I think it also trained us to be open to the idea of streaming, which has now taken off. I mean, I think that's why Apple kept it around for so long because there have been like think pieces, I guess you could say, opinion pieces, as back as 2013, 2012 of people saying like, we should really get rid of iTunes now. Like, what does it do? But Mm. I mean... It was just so important to to that company and to how we like interact with media, awful phrase, but that I think it's, it's just stuck around for, for this long for that reason. But I think we've, we're definitely ready for it to die. I mean, like, does how many people really use iTunes? I can't remember well, the last time I've used this iTunes. this is the thing, though. The whole act of moving from a, a, a huge playlist of, of, of MP3s that you own to streaming, it is kind of challenging at the same time, Ariel. For a lot of people, maybe people of more Generation X who did go through the work of taking their CDs, ripping the the content off them and putting it on iTunes to create a huge collection of MP3s, there have been a lot of complaints over the years that that music collection has been sort of messed with by Apple. Software updates to iTunes has, you know, removed some people's music or maybe Apple no longer had the rights to certain tracks. And that's what's also complicated about this picture because Steve Jobs, you can hear it in that 2001 keynote, and then Apple still uses the language of purchasing music. But it's sort of a mirage. You, if you are buying music for 99 cents or $1.50 or whatever from the iTunes music store, 
you've just licensed it really. It's not like a piece of content that you're going to be able to just give to a mate or pass down to your children. Mm. Apple also under the hood of iTunes introduced the complete ephemerality of digital content. The fact that you would no longer truly own things, you would just license them. How do you think it changes our relationship with music? Does it make music value less as it becomes more convenient? Some people certainly do believe that music today is much more a background activity. You just, because you can, because it travels with you and because streaming services let you access anything at any time, it just becomes a sort of background to your day and you don't have so much intentional listening, sitting down, going through an album in the way that the artist intended you to do it. If it's in the background, you don't want aggressive music, you don't want experimental music, you just want that nice wash. And so maybe that is changing what kind of music gets made. All right. There is lots more of this in the podcast of Download This Show. We're also talking about some of the wider implications of the WWDC, which every time I say in my mind, I feel like I'm talking about the WWE. We're also talking about a brand new, very fast electric car that the Victorian police have just bought. You can find out all the details when you download this show by downloading this show on whichever podcasting app you like to peruse. We'll catch you next week. (laughs)